Hey all, Art Manoyo here, artist of Spent Shells and also the game Cyberstrike. I'm making this tutorial to help newer pixel artists learn how to pixel art better, since it's sometimes pretty hard to find tutorials to start out in pixel art. For example, finding the fundamentals in general, just the words and the terminologies used for them, is typically very hard to find for no reason. For example, subpixeling and the clusters and stuff like that took me a pretty long time to learn. But hopefully this tutorial will help to cover all the basics and you can get started on your pixel art journey. So first things I'm going to be starting out with are clusters. Clusters in general are the main uh, things that newer modern pixel artists use to help get their textures across better. They also use clusters to help get certain things better. So say for example, you have a super noisy art piece. Well, then you use clusters to help reduce the amount of noise that it has. What I mean by noise is different colored pixels or off patterns that typically are hard to understand when you look at them. Well, say for example, you're using stuff that has a very low noise, then that means it's very easy to comprehend. Now, keep in mind that clusters come in every single shape and form. For example, you can see here, I have a bunch of different types of clusters. Over here is also more clusters. A lot of pixel artists that are good at their craft and stuff know how to use them really well. And in due time, you're gonna be one of them. Now, when it comes to pixel art, there's also a few other techniques, but most of them do revolve around clusters. So say for example, I'm going to make a face. Right here, you can see that I'm going to shade the face with mainly clusters by using these large blobs of paint, or I guess in this case, pixels. A lot of pixel artists can learn from how paintings work. For example, you could see in this artist's Mactruistics art, they use pixels to mimic the oil paint look. And if you understand that really well, then you can do it too. Now, clusters aren't the only thing that you need to know when you're learning pixel art. There's also anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is something else that's used to make pixel art softer. Softer pixel art helps to feel nicer. It helps to be easier on the eyes. It's a bit tricky to do with smaller sprites, but as with clusters, in due time, you'll learn how to do it. So whenever you're doing clusters, you need, or not clusters, <laughs> anti-aliasing, I mean, you need to remember that anti-aliasing has a habit of also making it harder to read. So what I mean by whenever I say pixel art is hard to read, it means it's very tricky to understand what you're looking at. So you'll see that a lot of newer pixel artists put these little dots on all the corners. That's anti-aliasing. So anti-aliasing is just there to smoothen stuff out. So you can see right here on this curve, I have just a few pixels that help to make it softer to look at. The reason why that works is because when you're looking at it and you see a mid-tone, then your brain connects it and thinks, oh, that's a gradient. Whoa. So if you know how to do that, then you can really figure out how to do some cool stuff with it. Here's some basic diagram for anti-aliasing. Just to make sure that when you're making anti-aliasing, it is always a mid-tone. Because a lot of times people use random colors that don't really work. And it tends to make it look very, very loud and hard to understand what you're looking at. Now, that's not the only thing that anti-aliasing can do. Anti-aliasing can also interact in something called subpixel animating. Subpixel animating is when you make a pixel move less than a pixel. So you move it, move half of a pixel. So say for example that I subpixel animate this little R. This little R, I want to move less than one pixel at a time. Well, remember I said how anti-aliasing can be used to make half of a pixel. Well, subpixel animating can make that and take even further. So say I'm going to make an idle animation. I'm going to add subpixel animating to make it softer and smoother to look at. Now, going on from anti-aliasing, we also have another big thing that a lot of new pixel artists have to learn how to control well, dithering. Now, dithering was used in a lot of older retro games to help make up for the lack of colors, which is another thing that a lot of pixel artists will tend to do is have very low color counts. One, because it makes it easier to manage all the colors and the shades and everything. Two, because if you use dithering, you can make more colors. Problem is, adds a bit of noise, so you have to be pretty careful with it. 
but this ring can be used to add textures, it can be used to break up pretty flat areas, it can be used to do a lot of things. And the set here and meeting with this ring, remember also that the ring usually follows the single checkerboard pattern, so make sure not to make it too noisy. But going into the problems that all of your pixel art can have, especially when you're starting out, is doubles, shaggies, and pillow shading. Doubles are when you have pixels in line art, line art being <laughs> the main black thing that you have going around everything, and shaggies being one <laughs> your line looks all goofy. So pretty much double, going back to the main thing, doubles are when your lines have double pixels. So you can see as it's going down, it has a lot of really weird looking pixels. Well, if you get rid of those, you can see you can refine it better. But keep in mind, as with all of these things I'm saying are typically problems, if you know how to use them properly, you can make them look nice. Doubles can be used a lot for sprite art to help make things stand out. You can see in some games also where they use heavy lines or in Blue Pathfinder, so a wonderful big source too you should follow. You can see that they use doubles very well. Now in Jaggies, which was one of the other things I said before, Jaggies have the problem of making your line art look jagged. Well, you can fix a lot of that by using anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing, you know, being mid-tone and softening things up. You soften it up going down. It helps to fix up that problem right away. Now, keep in mind, doubles and jaggies being line art, they're sometimes used, sometimes they're not, depending on the art style you're going for. Pillow shading is something that a lot of art styles have a problem with, though. Pillow shading is when you make the viewer the light source. So you can see here, I have this little ball, and as I move this light source around, you'll see that it tends to make it look a bit weird when I make the light source go right in front of the ball, where we're looking at. You can see that it has those weird bands of color. You can't tell what shape it is. That's pillow shading. Well, if I move it all the way over here, it helps to get rid of that problem and helps to fix up a lot of the weird stuff that it tends to have. Now, keep in mind, pillow shading can be used for some art styles, but typically you want to avoid it. And I'm planning on making a few more tutorials for this, for pixel art in general or in general. So if you have any ideas, leave a comment below and like and subscribe if you want to. And I hope all of you have a wonderful day pixeling. Goodbye, everyone.